Hello lovely people! In this amigurumi tutorial, I'll show you how to crochet this parrot. I was this was a very last minute um project. I was gonna I was working on the Chihuahua, but it didn't turn out the way I wanted to. But don't worry, um those of you who are waiting for a Chihuahua, I won't give up on it. I'll um keep looking at it and adjusting the pattern but I quickly needed another tutorial and then um, one of you lovely people suggested a parrot and I remember that many others of you have already suggested a parrot and probably I just um, forgot about it because I love birds, all birds and of course also parrots so then I was like yeah that's that's what I'm gonna do now and it was really difficult to decide on a color so I went for the red one but if you are interested in crocheting um, one that's um, you know the ones that are yellow with blue wings um, for those the color changes would be different because I would make the back in blue and the belly in yellow and then the wings just blue so it's a little bit different if you would like a separate tutorial for those, if you enjoyed this one and would like one for those as well, let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in or maybe one with spread wings or something like that. If uh, you would like that, let me know. So without further ado, For this project we need DK or light worsted weight yarn and I'll be using Paintbox Yarns Cotton DK in Pilla Red, Buttercup Yellow, Kingfisher Blue and I would be using Champagne White and Black but I ran out of those shades so I substitute them with Shapeless Katona in Bridal White and Black. This yarn is a bit lighter than the Paintbox yarn but um, it's similar enough so it works as a substitute but if you would like to use the paint box yarn as well I'll link to it in the description box below and I uh, list which shades I used for this project then we need a 2.5 millimeter hook and that's something in between a size B1 or C2 as always I recommend going for a B1 if you tend to crochet quite loosely but if your stitches are already quite tight, then a C2 will work beautifully. And if, um, if uh, it's available where you are, just go for a 2.5 millimeter like I have here. And then we need some safety eyes. And these are four millimeters in diameter. But if you prefer, you could also Embroider the eyes with black embroidery floss or even yarn. Then for the feet, we need some craft wire. Any color you like, I'll probably be using um, the brass color. And it should be about one millimeter thick. And we'll need about 30 centimeters, which is 12 inches. And then to bend the wire, to, to bend the feet in shape. It is helpful to have small pliers, small flat pliers like these, um, or even smaller ones for jewelry making. These I pinched from my husband's toolbox. <laughs> but don't worry if you don't have them because you can shape the wire with your hands. That shouldn't be a problem. It's, it's helpful to have them, but you can do it without. And then you just need something to cut the wire, but you can also use household scissors. Then we need some fiber fill, a yarn needle, scissors, a few pins and a stitch marker. So let's get started. We begin with the beak so that we have it ready for when the head is crocheted and we want to sew it on before um, continuing with the body. So let's start there. We begin with a magic ring. So just use your preferred magic ring, 
magic ring method. And in the first round, we single crochet three. One, two, and three in the magic ring. Then we close it. I don't close it very tightly just yet because that always helps me starting the next round. And with a tiny round like this, what I usually do is I pull a longer loop out so that I can comfortably insert my hook in the first stitch of the round to start round two. And once it's inserted in the stitch, then I pull the loop tight and now the first loop on my hook tightens and I can start crocheting. So in round two we increase one. I'm always I'm gonna be leaning always toward the left in this video I think because I I'm sitting at the other side of the table this time and I'm so used to um, holding my hands more toward the left. So that's one increase we've done in the first stitch and then in the next stitch we single crochet one and then we increase one in the next stitch. So as you can see it's all turning inside out slowly slowly but we'll fix that after this round. It's round two complete already and we have five stitches now. So I'll just pull the loop out a bit because now I close the magic ring completely and then I make sure that everything's turned the right way. So with my hook I just push it push the first round in so that it's all the way it should be. This is like, to me, this is the trickiest part and it took me the most time. <laughs> I think the, the figuring out how to make the beak took me longer than making the whole head and body of the parrot. <laughs> Those small body parts I find tricky. So once that's turned the right way, oops, it will get easier with each round. So we just crochet the next round and then we can again make sure that everything's right. So give it a little squeeze. Oh, that's looking good. So we crochet from the outside always sometimes, I mean very rarely, but sometimes um, I receive um, questions about my patterns and then um, I noticed that um, they crocheted from the inside, if you know what I mean. And that's, that's very, I imagine that's very difficult. And the stitches look a bit different, so should crochet around from the outside. That's the easiest way anyway. So in round three we start, let me place my stitch marker because it may get confusing from now on. We start with one single crochet. Then we increase in the next stitch. Oops. So two single crochet in there. Then we single crochet one in the next stitch. And we increase in the next stitch. There we go. And in the last stitch we single crochet one. So now our round has seven stitches. And in 
round four, we increase in the first stitch. So two single crochet in there. Some bird dropped something on the roof. You can see that the wood pigeons are probably building nests because they are picking up twigs from the garden and sometimes they drop them on the conservatory roof which is very noisy. So we made one increase in the first stitch and then we make a single crochet in the next. And we repeat this three times. So three times all together, so two more times. One increase. And one single crochet. And once more, one increase. And one single crochet. And then in the last stitch, we make one increase. So now our round has 11 stitches. So now we can go ahead and cut this yarn into a little shorter so that we can hide it inside the beak because next we'll close the beak by crocheting both sides together. So I'll just use my closed scissors to carefully squeeze this in It, it shouldn't fill it too much, so if it's too thick now, then cut it shorter or, or maybe weave it in instead. So now, we make five single crochet and we crochet both sides together. So this last stitch that we made, the 11th stitch, that one we just leave there, we ignore this. We go through the next stitch and then on the opposite side, which is the stitch before the last stitch, we go through that one as well. And squeeze the yarn end in a little bit more so that you can see better where the stitches are. So I go through both on opposite sides and then we pick up the yarn, pull it through there and make a single crochet. And we repeat this with the other stitches. So we go through the next and then we go through the corresponding stitch on the other side, pick it up, pull it through to single crochet. So we have three more, we go through the next stitch and through the stitch on the opposite side that's three, now four And with, with the last one, when you go through that, there will only be like a one loop. Just that sometimes you just need to push it through a few crochets tightly as I do. Um, so it looks like this. And it's there's just gonna be like, it looks like there's just one loop on your hook. And that's the last single crochet. 
I try to make this stitch very tiny so that it doesn't poke out so much. And then we leave a long yarn end for sewing. That should be enough. And then later we'll bend the beak a bit like so. And now we have it ready for when we need it. So now we'll continue with the head, with the top of the head. And um, the head and body will crochet in one piece. So we start with the magic ring again in red. And in the first round, we single crochet, oh, <laughs> almost out of frame again. It's strange how habits are hard to break. So, six single crochet in the magic ring. One, two, three, four. Five and six. Then we close the magic ring and in round two we increase in all six stitches. So two single crochet in each stitch. That's two. Four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. So that's round two done and Now you can close the magic ring properly if you haven't already and I'll be placing my stitch marker in the last stitch. Now in round three we start with three increases. So two single crochet in the first stitch, two single crochet in the second stitch and two single crochet in the third stitch. Then we single crochet in the next three and then we increase three again so One increase, two increases, three increases, and then we single crochet in the remaining three stitches. And now our round has 18 stitches. In the next round, we'll start joining the white yarn. So I'll just pull my loop out a bit because I want to prepare a little loop in white so that we have it ready for when we need it. Just make a slip knot so that I have a loop. And I'll just keep that there for when we join it. So in round four, we start with two single crochet, one and two, then we increase two, then 
Now I'll move to the left on purpose because there's too much sun on the right. So two single crochet and two increases. Then we single crochet two. And in the next single crochet, we change to white. So we insert our hook in the next stitch, pick up the red yarn, pull it through so that we have our two loops, and then we pull the white loop on our hook and pull it through the two red loops. And now we just hold this yarn end out of the way with the hand that we hold our hook in. And now when I use two colors, um, the way I hold my yarn, because we, we don't just leave the red yarn here, we will crochet around it to carry it with us so that we have it ready for when we want to change the colors again. And so I usually hold my yarn like this. Maybe you have your own trick on how to do this. Um, if so, feel free to share it in the comments. Um, I usually hold the yarn like this so that the color that I crochet with is on top of my index finger. And the color that I don't crochet with now that is worked into the stitches that is below. And they are separated by my knuckle here. So um, then I just hold them in place with my pinky and ring finger just to keep the tension. And then let's see what we do next. Now we increase. So in the next stitch we single crochet two in white and so we insert our hook in this stitch and then we go under the red yarn to pick up the white and pull it through under the red yarn and then through the stitch so now we have our two white loops here and then we go over the red yarn to pick up the white and pull it through over the red yarn pull it through the two white loops and we increase so one more in the same stitch so we go under the red yarn pick up the yarn pull it through underneath the red yarn and then we go on top pick up the white yarn and pull it through the two loops and this way the red yarn is hidden inside these stitches and even if it shines through a little bit to me that's fine because in nature they have like a little bit of a stripy pattern where the, there are very fine red lines in the white part of the face even so I'm fine with that that's how nature looks anyway so then we single crochet one in the next and in the next single crochet we change back to red so now we go through the stitch pick up the white yarn pull it through and then we pick up the red yarn and pull it through the white loops so now we changed and we're ready to start the next stitch in red so now the red yarn goes on top and the white yarn below so then we single crochet one and this time we go underneath the white yarn pick up the red pull it through underneath the white and then we go over the white to pick up the red and in the next stitch we increase one and two in there and in the next stitch we change to white again so 
we go through the next stitch, pick up the red, and then pick up the white and pull it through the two red loops. Switch again, so white goes on top again. And now we single crochet two. And then we increase, and in the increase we also change to red. So we change in the second single crochet of the increase. So first we make one single crochet in the next stitch and then another single crochet in the next stitch in which we'll change to red. So we first pull the white yarn through and then pick up the red and pull it through the two white loops. And so now we single crochet one and increase in the next two. One, two in there and one and two in there. By the way, sometimes you can pull the yarn that you're crocheting in just to make sure that it doesn't peek out too much in between the stitches. Just don't pull it too tight so that, that it doesn't affect the shape of the amigurumi. Now in the next single crochet, we change to white again. So we pick up the red, pull it through, and then we pick up the white and pull it through. And now white goes on top again. Then we single crochet in the next two. And then we increase and in the second single crochet of the increase we change back to red. So first we make one complete, complete single crochet in white. And then in the same stitch we go and pick up the white yarn and then the red. So now red goes on top again and in the last stitch of the round we single crochet one in red. So that's round four done. Now in round five we start joining the black yarn because the lower part of the beak, that one I just crochet as the head in black and the beak that we crochet that's just the upper part of the beak. So I pull a little loop out here and then I will prepare the black yarn so that we have it ready for when we need it. So as we did with the white, we just make a little loop and put that aside. So first we start with eight single crochet in red, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Just pull the white yarn a little bit. Now in the next single crochet we change to white. So pick up the red and then pick up the white. Now white goes on top. Now we single crochet in the next three. One, Two, three, and in the next single crochet we change to black. So we pick up the white yarn and pull it through 
Now I just leave those two and pull the black loop on the hook and pull it through the two white loops. Now we just keep this black yarn and out of the way. And now we have three colors, but we just do the same thing as we did with the two colors because those two we will crochet around now and we just treat it as if it was one color. So they go both together there and the black yarn goes on top and I hold the yarn the same way. I just treat these two colors as one. So now we single crochet five in black. So now we go through the next stitch underneath the black and white, pick up the black, did I say black and white or red and white? We go under the red and white, pick up the black, pull it through underneath those and then we go on top, over the top of them, pick up the black and pull it through. So we go pick up the black underneath, then we go over the top, so that's three, four, five, and in the next single crochet we change to white. So we go through, pick up the black from underneath, pull it through, and then we pick up the white and pull it through the two black loops. So now the white yarn goes on top and the black and red both go beneath. And so let's see now we single crochet three in white. So we go through the next stitch underneath the black and red, pick up the white, pull it through from underneath, then go over the top pick up the white, pull it through the two loops. That was one, now two, and three, and in the next single crochet we change to red. So we go through the next stitch, pick up white, pull it through, and then we pick up red and pull it through. And now red goes on top and black and white go beneath, below, and now at this stage sometimes you may want to detangle everything so that you don't end up with a big yarn mess. So now we're at round six and again we, oh no not yet, sorry, <laughs> forgot the last stitch which is a single crochet in red. Now we're at round six. And it starts again with eight single crochet in red. One. Now sometimes you can pull both of these. Two, three, four, Five, six, seven, and eight. Give those another little tug. And now in the next single crochet we change to white. So we pick up the red, pull it through, and pick up the white and pull it through. White goes on top. And now we single crochet in the next two. One and two. And in the next single crochet we change to black. So we pick up the white, pull it through, and the black and pull it through. Now black goes on top. And now we single crochet in the next seven. So one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in the next single crochet, we change to white. So pick up the black, pull it through, and then pick up the white and pull it through. And white goes on top. Then we single crochet two again. And in the next single crochet, we change to red. So we pick up the white and pull it through, and then the red and pull it through. And now red goes on top. And we finish with a single crochet in red. So that's round six done. I think I need to detangle now. It's much better. So now in round seven, again, we start with eight single crochet in a red. One, oops, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and oops, eight. Pull those black and black and white ends. Now in the next single crochet, we change to white again, so pick up the red, pull it through, and then pick up the white, and white goes on top. And this time, we single crochet one in white, and in the next single crochet, we change to black. So we pick up the white, pull it through, and then pick up the black and pull it through. Black goes on top. And now we single crochet in the next nine stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now I give those the red and white little tuck. And then we change to white. The next single crochet. Now we single crochet one. And in the next single crochet, we change to red. So, red goes on top. And we finish with one single crochet in red. In the next round, we start with nine single crochet in red and we fasten off the white yarn in this round, but I keep it for now because we just made a few stitches in white and now I want to crochet around the white yarn a little bit so that um, 
it gets worked into the stitches and this way we weave it in and secure the yarn end. So single crochet nine, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now I pull these black and white ends tight again. And the white one I will cut off now and we don't need to crochet that in anymore. Just leave it a bit, maybe five centimeter or two inch. And as long I leave that and that can just go inside the head and be hidden there. Just keep that out of the way for now. So in the next single crochet we change it to black. So we pick up the red yarn, pull it through, and then pick up the black and pull it through. So black goes on top now. Just detangle these. Now we decrease five times. Yeah, five times, just had to double check. So when we decrease, um, by the way, if you're not familiar with the, the invisible decrease method, I can link to it in the upper right corner there. Um, when we decrease, we also crochet around the red yarn. So we go through the back loop of the next stitch, which is this white one. Then we go through the back loop of the next stitch, which is this black one. So if you haven't done these decreases yet, definitely check out the video because it's hard to see here with the black. So this is not the ideal video to learn it. Then we go underneath the red yarn that we crochet around, pick up the black, pull it through underneath the red, pull it through the two front loops. So now we have two loops on our hook and then we go over the top of the red yarn, pick up the black, pull it through the two loops. So that was one decrease done and now four more through the front loop, the next front loop, underneath the red, pick up the black, pull it through the front loops, go over the top it up, pull it through the two loops. So front loop, front loop under the red, pick up the black, pull it through the front loops over the red, pick up the black. That was three. This is four and five. Now I pulled the red yarn a little bit. And now we have one more decrease, but while we decrease, we also change colors. So I go through the, through the next front loop, which is the black one here, the last black one. Then through the next one, which is the first white one. Now we go under the red to pick up the black, pull it through the two front loops. But now we pick up the red and pull it through the two loops on our hook. And now red goes on top and we single crochet in the remaining two stitches. So, our round of 24 is now down to 18.
and in the next round we have more decreases so we first sew on the beak and insert the safety eyes because later it gets a little bit tricky so I secure my stitch here so now we take our beak and thread the yarn end on our yarn needle and we will sew this on round one, two, three, four, five, which is this first black round. So that's easy to see. We don't really need pins for that, I would say, because it goes exactly on this um, black part. There's only one tiny stitch or like half a stitch on each side will remain visible. And this means that we start um, we start sewing it on here. So in the second black stitch counted from here, one, two, that's where we go through first. And this way it should all work out nicely without pins. So I just go through there and then through the beak again. Now through the second stitch of the beak, like this. So now we just move forward stitch by stitch. Now I go through the next stitch here on round five. And then through the next stitch of the beak here. Pull that tight. And through the next stitch of the head. And then through the next stitch of the beak, which is now the stitch before the last stitch. And now through the next stitch of the head, which will be the last, because we want like half a black stitch peeking out at the side. And then we go through the last stitch of the beak. And finally, I go again through the same stitch of the head that I already went through. I just stitch inside the head now, for now. Just to see if everything looks okay. Pull it really nice and tight. And now we just check that it's all quite centered, that there's a little bit black there, a little bit black there. And we can bend it a little bit. So that's how it looks from the sides. So oh, you can also, if you want to make sure that the beak lays on top of the head because the black part is kind of supposed to be partly the lower part of the beak. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So I stitch through here now to attach the beak from this side as well. And, and that will also help weave in the yarn end a bit. Then I stitch through the beak again. And inside the head. And 
and that's it. Now I'll just find another yarn end in here that I've hidden inside the head that's close to this yarn end so that I can just tie them together. Or Or I'll just thread it on my yarn needle. I think that's better. And go to this white part here. And then we can weave in the yarn and, and this white part here. With a few stitches. Until we feel that it's secure. And then we can hide all the yarn ends inside. And now we can insert the safety eyes. So you can place them wherever you like, of course, but I think they look best in between the first and second white row there, somewhere there, more toward the back. So that's where I put this one. And on the other side, I'll do the same right there and then you can just check and see if you're happy with the placement I would just check from all sides and once you're happy you can secure them so you can kind of push oh. Yeah, they won't fall out. <laughs> so you can push the safety eye out like so, so that it will be a bit easier. If you push it toward the opening, then you can easily put on the other end to secure it. And then on the other side. And that's it. So now we can continue crocheting. And we won't need the black yarn anymore, but I'll continue crocheting around it just to make sure that um, it gets crocheted inside the stitches and secured this way. So we single crochet 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So now we can cut off the black yarn and then we decrease three times. So I'll go through the front loop, the next stitch and the front loop of the next stitch. Decrease next two front loops. and the next two front loops and then we single crochet in the remaining two stitches of the round 
So now our round is down to 15 stitches. And I'll secure my stitch again because next we want to start filling the head. So I just hide this yarn end in there. And then we can take the, some fiber fill. And squish that into a little ball. A little bit smaller to get it inside the head. Fill the head generously. I mean, it shouldn't shouldn't be too much so that the shape will be affected, but just nice and firm. That will definitely be enough. So. That's the little head done. <laughs> now we will just crochet the body in red and the color comes in when we crochet the wings. So in the next round we simply single crochet in all 15 stitches. One three, trying not to work in the fiber fill, <laughs> four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, and 15. Now in the next round we will increase a little bit. So we single crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, four, and then we increase. And we repeat this two more times, three times all together. So that once the round is complete, we'll have 18 stitches. That's four and then we increase. One increase in the last stitch. 
Oops. Next round should get easier in terms of fiber fill. <laughs> there we go. In round 12, we single crochet in the next five stitches. Two, three, four, five, and then we increase. And once again, we do this three times all together. So one, two, three, four, five, and increase, one, two, oh. Two, three, four, five, and increase in the last stitch. So now our round has 21 stitches. And now for seven rounds, so that's round 13 to 19, all we do is single crochet in all 21 stitches. So, you can now pause the video and crochet the seven rounds of 21 stitches in your own time and then hit play once you completed round 19. My seven rounds of 21 single crochet are complete now. So we can continue with round 20. And in round 20, we start with 11 single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then we decrease five times. One. Two, three, four, and five. So now we can Add some more fiber fill if you haven't already. We can still add some more after the next round. So that's enough for now, I'd say. And in the next round, we start with a decrease. Let's see, one was here, the other one is here. Okay, 
Um, I just want to mention that uh, it looks best if the decreases are all in the front. So you can check um, because it de depending on the tension of um, um, that you have when you crochet, you may be in a different place. Like my um, end of the round is almost exactly at the front of the body, but for you it may be different. So you can change the placements of the decreases if necessary. So now I'm just checking because I can see where the biggest, that's the front. I just want to see where the first decrease was. And it was here. So I'll actually make another decrease here. I'll just change it around. So I use this opportunity to tell you that you can do the same. Originally I had written for round 21, decrease one, single crochet eight, decrease two. But now I realize that another decrease here would look better so that, that they are all in the front and not more on one side than on the other. And so I change it now to decrease two, single crochet eight, decrease two. So we add one decrease on one side and deduct one on the other side. And you can definitely do that to make sure that all the decreases are here in the front. So one more decrease. Then we single crochet eight. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we finish with two decreases, or you make however many decreases. you have after adjusting this round. One, and two. So, that's round 21 done, and in the next round, we start with one decrease. Well, if if the end of the round for you is in the front as well, then let me just tell you it's uh, de one decrease, eight single crochet, one decreases, uh, one decrease this time. So um, yeah, you can adjust it if if your end of the round, let's say, is in the back. Then first you would make four single crochet, decrease, decrease, four single crochet, just as an example. So try to make all the decreases here in the front. So I start with a decrease and then eight single crochet, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, and one decrease. Oh, and I want to actually <laughs> to get more fiber fill after this round, after the previous round. I'll just do it now. This is probably the last chance because now our round has 10 stitches and we'll decrease more. So then the round will be too small to add any more fiber fill. So add whatever you want to add now.
I think I added enough fiber fill now. We'll now move into the tail feathers and they won't be filled with fiber fill. So I think that's it. That should be enough. Now, in the next round, we start with a decrease once more, but again, make the two decreases of the round in the front. So we can change the round accordingly. I start with one decrease and then six single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one more decrease. There we go. So now our round has eight stitches and that was round 23. Now round 24 to 35, that's 12 rounds. Um, for 12 rounds we will simply crochet in all eight stitches. So I'll just let you do this in your own time again. I don't add the stitch marker back in. What I always do is I just completely focus on crocheting and just count till eight and then eight, one, eight, two, eight, three, and so on until I reach 12. So you can pause the video and then hit play once you've completed these 12 rounds of eight single crochet. So my 12 rounds of eight stitches are done now and we only have one round left for the tail. So we single crochet two. And then we decrease. And then we do this once more. Single crochet two. and decrease. So now around has six stitches and here we fasten off and now we close the round so we thread this on our yarn needle And we go through all six front loops. Just the front loops of each of these six stitches of the last round. And that's six. Then we pull tight and now we insert our needle in the center of this last round. And now we can stitch through somewhere where we want to weave the yarn end in. And once you feel it's secure enough, you can just cut it short. So, now 
we can go ahead and crochet the wings and that's going to be so much fun because now we'll get some more color in. So the wings are crocheted in rows and we will crochet both wings together because um, they are slightly different on each side and they are crocheted in three colors and we start with red and we leave a long yarn end in the beginning, which we will later need to sew the wings on. So I'm leaving it about 30 centimeters, 12 inches, um, just in case. We'll also use the other yarn ends and the other colors to sew the wings on, just to make it look nice and neat. So we start with three chains. So I just make a little loop and then we chain three and then we single crochet two. So in the second chain from our hook, We make a single crochet and then one in the next chain. Then we chain one and turn. And in row two, we increase in both stitches. So two single crochet in the first stitch and two single crochet in the second stitch and chain one and turn. Now in row three, we increase in the first stitch, two in here, then we single crochet in the next two, and increase in the last stitch, so two single crochet in here, and the chain we make now in yellow, because now we're going to change to yellow. And we can cut the red yarn off but now we leave a long yarn and again because this yarn end we will later use to crochet around the red part of the wing and because that's quite long because it's this whole upper shoulder part and we need it to be quite long so I'd say in case I don't know maybe four to five centimeters so 60 maybe 18 inches in case because we, that's frustrating if you run out of yarn there and now when we join the yellow yarn we also leave a long yarn end because on both sides we will use the yellow yarn to crochet around the wing and the remain the remaining yarn ends we will then use to sew on the wing. Yellow doesn't need to be that long because that's just um, three rows of yellow. I do 30 on each side in case. So now I just pull a loop through in yellow and then I pull the, well this is the yarn end, so the red yarn end and the yellow yarn end I just keep here in place and then I chain one in yellow and then in row four and five we simply single crochet in all six stitches so one two three four five and six then chain one and turn and six single crochet again one two three four five and six chain one and turn then in row seven we do the same 
just that we do the chain one in blue. So we single crochet in all six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we leave another long yarn end about 30 centimeters, 12 inches. And now we join the blue yarn. The blue needs to be extra long because that's the biggest part of the wing. So that one I leave like 50 centimeters, which um, <laughs> let me calculate. I'm not sure how long that is. Let's say 20 inches. I, I'm quite sure that will be enough. <laughs> this is all in case because we don't want to run out. That would be so annoying. So now we pull that blue loop through and then we hold the yarn end together with the yellow yarn end in place and we chain one in blue. So now in row seven, once again, we single crochet in all six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, chain one and turn. Now in row eight for this right wing, we skip the first stitch and then we single crochet in the next. So this one we skip, single crochet in the next, skip, single crochet in the next, and then we single crochet in the remaining two stitches. Chain one and turn. So now we have four stitches, one, two, three, four, and in the next row, we single crochet two. Skip the next one and single crochet one in the last stitch. Chain one and turn. Now we have three stitches and we skip the first stitch and single crochet in the remaining two. One and two, chain one and turn. Then we single crochet in both stitches, single crochet, two, chain one and turn. Then we skip the first stitch and single crochet in the last stitch. chain one and turn. Now we single crochet the, the only stitch of the row. Chain one and turn and again single crochet one, chain and turn and once again we single crochet one. So now we should have this wing and the other, the working yarn and should be here so that we can work up this way now. And the other yarn end where we joined, which we joined the, um, um, the blue yarn with, that should be on the other side. Because now we crochet all around the wing and everywhere we need one yarn end to do that in the correct color. So we start from where we are and we crochet in the side of each row. And we begin by making one more single crochet in the exact same spot where we already crocheted in just now. One. Then in the side of the next row, so just in this next gap there that you can see, let's 
two. And here we try not to crochet too um, tightly. Then in the next gap here, that would be the next row, that's three. Then in here, that's four. In this gap, five. Then in this gap here, that's six. And in the next gap, and that's seven. Now in the side of the last blue row, we change to the yellow yarn end. So we go through this next gap here, which is this one. Here, pick up the blue yarn, pull it through. Then we leave that. And now we take this yellow yarn that's a few rounds ahead, but that's fine, that will work. So we take this and pull it through the two blue loops, pull the blue yarn in tight, and now we continue in yellow. So in the next gap we crochet in yellow, so the next side of the round, which is somewhere here, we insert our hook, single crochet, then in this gap here, single crochet, and in the next single crochet we change to this red yarn and that we have here. So in this gap here we insert our hook, pick up the yellow yarn, pull it out, leave the yellow yarn, take the red yarn and the one that's closest to where you are, this that we started with that will be used for sewing. Then we Pull that through the two yellow loops and then in this next gap here we make a red single crochet. That's one and then in the next gap here in the side one more single crochet. Now we single crochet in the other side of the two base chains that we started with. So here and here. So one in this big gap here, just keep the this yarn end out of the way. Also this blue yarn end here, um, that doesn't have to be so long. Maybe we need just a little bit for sewing. So one single crochet in the other side of each of the two base chains, one in there, and then in this here next to it, one in there. Then we single crochet in the side of the next two rows, like one in here, and the next one goes in here. Then in the next gap here, we change to this yellow yarn and so in there pick up the red yarn pull it through leave the red yarn take the yellow yarn and pull that through and don't pull too tight because again that's a little bit on the other end like three rounds ahead but that's fine then in the next gap here we single crochet one in yellow then in the next side of the round here, yellow. And in this next gap, we change to blue. So we go through there, pick up yellow, pull it through, leave the yellow, take this long blue yarn end and pull it through the two yellow loops. And now in the other side of each row of the blue part we single crochet one, so one in here, then one in here, one 
one in here, three, one in here, that's four. Next one goes in here, five, in the next gap, six, here in the next gap, seven, and in the next eight. So now we crochet all around the wing. So that was, that didn't have to be so long that yarn and I may make a note that 18 inches is more than, than enough, even 16, like 40 centimeters would have been enough, I think. So now we make an invisible finish here. So we thread this blue yarn end on our needle. And here you can see the first single crochet that we made. Um, yeah, it was actually in the last row of the um, of the wing that we crocheted this. So in here, we go through both loops, front and back loop, pull that through. And then here you can see the last single crochet that we made. And now we go in be through in between front and back loop of this stitch. And pull that through. So this way we have a nice and neat finish here. Now we can weave in this yarn end. On the other side and the other yarn ends we leave for now because we may use them to sew the wing on. So this is the right wing done. You can stretch it a little bit to get it in the right shape and now we crochet the left wing. So again we leave a long 30 centimeter yarn end in the beginning. 12 inches. Then we start with three chains and then we make two single crochet. First goes in the second chain from our hook and one in the last chain. Then we chain one and turn. Then we increase in both the stitches. Increase Increase chain one and turn then We increase in the first stitch Single crochet in the next two and increase in the last stitch. Oops. <laughs> now again with a long yarn and about 30 centimeters we join the yellow yarn and the red yarn again we can cut off but it also with the long yarn end so now we single crochet in all six stitches oh first we chain one single crochet six one two three four five and six chain one and turn so far everything's the same as with the other wing then single crochet six again all 
also the same. Chain one and turn. Six single crochet again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. But this time we cut off the white, uh, yellow yarn again, leaving a long yarn end, let's say 12 inches. 30 centimeters and now we join the blue yarn and yeah it doesn't have to be super long so let's say 40 centimeters 16 inches that will definitely be enough this time that's how long we leave the yarn and before we pull the loop out and then we just hold the yarn in place chain one and single crochet six, one, two, three, four, five, six, chain one and turn. Now Let's see where I was in my pattern. All right, so now we single crochet two, the first two, one in the first, another one in the next. Then we skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next and skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next. Chain one and turn. Now we skip the first stitch and then single crochet in the remaining three. One, two, three, chain one, turn. Then we single crochet in the first stitch, skip the middle stitch and single crochet in the last stitch. Chain and turn and we just single crochet in both stitches, chain and turn. Now we single crochet one. Um, no, that doesn't work. So we skip the first stitch and single crochet one in the second. Chain one and turn. And then we single crochet one, chain one and turn, single crochet in the one and only stitch, chain one and turn, and we single crochet one. And now we do the same what we did before, but since I'm gonna do it anyway, we may as we might we might as well do it together again. So we crochet all around the wing again and we start by making one single crochet in the same stitch that we already just crocheted in. And then up the side and the side of each row, here, one here, that's two, one in the next gap, that's three, one in here, that's four, one in here, it's five, six, and seven. Pull that a bit. So these stitches shouldn't be too tight, otherwise it's all going to shrink. And um, so that these stitches can be a bit more loose. Then in the next single crochet, we change to yellow. So we pick up the blue. This yarn and can be cut off. Doesn't have to be long. We'll just weave that in or maybe we use a little bit for sewing then we pick up the white loop and the yellow loop pull it through the two blue loops then we have two single crochet and yellow and in the next one we change to red so we just leave that yarn in there and pull the a red yarn through 
Then we have two single crochet and a red. Then we keep this other yarn and out of the way because now we single crochet in the other side of the base chain, one in each, which is one and two. Now two single crochet down the other side, one and two. In the next one, we change it to yellow. So we leave the red and pull the yellow through and two single crochet in yellow and in the next single crochet we change to blue so we leave the yellow and pull the blue through and now we have eight remaining in blue one two three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now we make an invisible finish again. So this we thread on our yarn needle go through the last stitch or the first stitch no the last stitch of the wing in the last row actually and then through the front and back loop of, of the last stitch that we just crocheted and that's it then we weave in the yarn end on the other side And the next step is sewing on the wings. So this is the left wing we just crocheted. I'll just weave this in a bit further and then we can go right into the sewing part. There we go. So cut this short, pull tight, and uh, pull, pull it a bit. So this is the left wing. So this will go on this side here. So just start with any side. And just start with this one now and you can decide where you want to attach it to. I just leave a few um, rounds here, like three rounds after the last black round. I just leave one, two, three and that's where I start with the shoulder. So I just pin this in place. Be careful that you don't hurt yourself with the pins poking out the other side. You can also pin like so, so they don't poke out hopefully. And before you start you may want to check that the other wing looks the same. Just hold it in place and check how it will look then from all sides. It's looking good to me. So now we start with the red part. So which one was the All right, it was this one. So you can weave all the other yarn ends in. So we need a little bit of yellow on each side, but the blue we probably don't need. Um, I'll just start sewing and then I see what, what I actually need and what can be woven in. So I'll do it this way. So first I thread the red yarn end on my needle, the one that was meant for sewing, 
and I just start where the red part begins. So first I stitch through the body. And then through the wing, just through the stitch. And then through the body. And I try to stitch as close to the wing when I stitch through the body as I can because that will look best. Otherwise the stitches will become very big and obvious and we want them to be nice and small and neat. <laughs> so that will look prettier if they are smaller. Oh, that was... Okay, that's all right. <laughs> Get rid of the pins as you go. So I'll crochet all around the red part and um, so sorry I'll so. <laughs> all around the red part And one stitch now, get rid of this pin as well, because now I want to stitch through here underneath the wing, because that's where I want to um, sew, sew this um, yarn end in. Or what you can do, since it's all going to be hidden, if you're lazy like me, <laughs> do this. I think, I think that would be the lazy way. I just take the other red yarn end. And instead of weaving that one in as well, I just go and stitch that through the body as well, close to the other one. And this is the side of the body that will be hidden by the wing and then I just pull the, this yarn and that I just used for sewing nice and tight so that the seam looks nice and neat. Then I just tie these two ends together with a double knot so that they are nice and secure and then I just cut them short and that will all be hidden underneath the wing. So. That's one way of doing that. So now I want to sew the yellow part on. So with this we need to be extra careful because that will look different. Because the red blends in with the red body. Here we need to be a little bit more careful. So the yarn end is at the bottom end of this yellow part. But that's fine. I'll just sew up because I don't I'm not gonna sew it on the blue part anyway that will be just loose. Um, so I stitch through the body and this time I really want this stitch to be hidden as much as possible so I stitch through the body almost where the wing will cover it. And then I stitch through the wing and again through the body, like very, very close to it or almost underneath it. And through the wing. Oops. <laughs> Uh, 
and one more stitch through the body and one more stitch through the wing and then again I stitch here through the body somewhere where it will be covered stitch through to here, pull that nice and tight and I will just leave it there until I have the other yarn end, yellow yarn end and then we can again tie them together. So now we sew, sew the yellow part on the other end. Okay, this time I'm going up from the top down so one stitch to through the body as close to the wing as possible or underneath it then one stitch through the wing One stitch through the body, one stitch through the wing, one stitch through the body, and one stitch through the wing. Do this again where I stitch through the body here where it will be hidden by the wing. Just oh, that was too close, that was exactly the same spot where the other yarn end came out, and that won't work because I want to tie them together. So now it's very close, so that's good. So now I make a nice and secure double knot again and cut these yarn ends short and then short enough so that they won't be visible of course, maybe a little shorter. <laughs> also this yarn end here that I've woven in, that one I will cut shorter. And now all I do is weave this blue yarn end in. So I'll just weave this in on the wing on the inside of the wing. So that's one wing sewn on. With the other side, we just repeat the same. So I let you do this on your own or you can um, go back to um, the part of sewing on the wing. There's a clickable timestamp in the description box below. And it's exactly the same on the other side. So I'll just let you do that. And then all that's left to do are the feet. So the wings are sewn on now 
and that means all that's left now are the feet. So if you've used one of my, or if you've made one of my birds, then you already know how that works. I'll just do it the same way with this one. So I'll be using this um, will I be using this? Yeah, I think I used the brass color wire. Um, 30 centimeters or 12 inches should be enough, but um, I'll just leave this. I'll just use the rest because that's all I have left in this color. And I'll attach them here. So here where the tail starts um, I just leave like one two rounds the space there and that's where I will attach them so I just let's see if that works yeah um, so I'll just stitch through here This is a good distance, I think. So now I have um, one, two, I don't know, maybe three stitches because these are decreases. It's a bit wider, but there's like one centimeter um, space now. I'll just cut off this fiber fill that I just pulled out with the wire. Um, yeah, so one centimeter, 0 0.4 to half an inch uh, space between the legs. So I pull this whole, um, this whole wire through. And so that the center is now here. Then we bend them downward so that we can shape the legs with them. I just try to make them as straight as possible. In the end, um, we'll add some glue, like we did with the um, European Robin, just to make sure that it doesn't move around so much. So now I'll be using my pliers, but you can just bend the wire now by hand. So around one centimeter or 0 0.4 inches. I bend it now forward. Let's do all of these steps with one piece first. Like so. And then now we make the four toes. Just the difference with um, the parrot is that I think, if I'm not wrong, the two toes are po pointing forward and two toward the back. And I think I'm going to make the forward pointing ones longer. So that's the only difference. So I start with the inner um, forward pointing toe now. So yeah, this makes it a little bit easier. So I'll just make it a little bit longer than the leg, this toe, but just a little bit over the one centimeter or, or 0 0.4 inch. So could be maybe, I don't know. 0 0.6 inch, I'm not measuring it, I'm just giving you like a rough guideline, like I think it's good to just see and uh, check what looks good to you. So then we bend this forward again, this wire, and the other toe I leave even a bit longer. And then I bend it backward again. And then I squeeze. That's a good thing that you can do when you have, if you have um, tongs, that you can squeeze them together a bit. Okay. Let's just lay him on, him, on his back. Then now we do the toes that are pointing backwards and those I make a little bit shorter so a little bit just get this out of the way to the side so I bend this forward again it's maybe a little bit less than a centimeter or 0 0.4 inches squeeze 
squeeze it. And then I bend it back. Backward and again forward. And also I made this one longer. I'm not sure if that's correct. So it's just... <laughs> This is difficult enough, so I think we don't have to worry too much about the right proportions here. So now we can wrap this yarn end. Actually, we can pull it a bit out because we haven't made the other foot yet to make it easier. Now we can wrap the yarn end around this leg as tightly as we can. And if you're really good at this, you can wrap it around and around for the whole length of the leg, but um, I'm not that good at it, so I won't be doing that. I think I would do more harm than good, so I'll just wrap it around once. Try to squeeze all of this together. And then I just cut this short. So that's one side done. And one, one leg and one foot done. This needs to be wrapped around because you don't want any I mean, this is not a toy anyway, but you don't want to hurt yourself with this. So let's wrap it around where it can't hurt us. Okay, so that's one foot done. Now the other one. So pull this downward again. And now I just try to make everything in the same proportions, which is a little challenge. So at one centimeter or 0 0.4 inches roughly, I'm just guessing, just the same length if possible as the other leg. I just bend this forward. Now we start first with the inner toe. Maybe I should have made the inner one longer than the outer one. I'll just stick with it now at about one centimeter 0 0.4 inches I'll just bend it backward and squeeze it together then we bend it back forward give it a little squeeze So that was too much of a squeeze. Then we bend this backward again. We can lay on the on its back. Give it a little squeeze. Now we make the backward pointing toes. So bend it forward again. And then here at the center, so to speak, I just bend it back in the other direction if I can. Mm -hmm. And bend it back for the last toe. And give it a little squeeze. Squ 
squeeze both toes a little more and then we wrap this as tightly as we can around the leg then give that a little squeeze and cut it short so now we just need to bend everything in place the way we want it to be So I'll just spread these front toes a bit wide, a little bit wider, and then I just bend them a little like so, so that he can sit on a branch or something. Oops, without this one bending as well. Okay. So. I think that's done. I think I can't get it done any better than this. <laughs> Hope that will help him sit on a branch or something. But you can also make a loop and um, put it through the top of his head and then you can hang him up somewhere as an ornament. So now the last step is just, like last time that I'll be adding two drops of glue. There it is. And the feet are pointing downward this way so you can't sit it up anyway. It ha there has to be something like <laughs> something where the, the feet can go so that you can sit him up. So I recommend turning him in, into an or into an ornament actually. In which case maybe you don't need to secure the feet. So this is optional. Just one little drop there. And one little drop there. Okay, just leave that to dry. And then our little parrot is complete. Well done, everyone. Thank you so, so much for crocheting along with me. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a big thumbs up for me. That would help a lot. Thank you so much. And um, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that you don't miss any of my future Amigurumi tutorials. And like I mentioned already in the beginning, if you enjoyed this and you would like um, a parrot in another color, then just let me know in the comments below. I won't do it right away because first I'll do something else and get to some of the other suggestions, but I always like having a long list of things to choose from if something doesn't work out I can do something else first and I always welcome your suggestions so please keep them coming there are many cute things on there that I uh, will definitely give a go and I can't wait for that so thank you so much for being here for crocheting along with me because of you I get to do what I love so much so thank you so much happy crocheting bye